Welcome to another podcast. This is Kathleen and my co-host Rachel and I are both having sort of a rough day technically and there's been a lot of storms in our area so neither one of us have had a lot of sleep lately. So Rachel, are we ready to do our thing and and, and not <laughs> flub up like we did before? <laughs> it's going to be amazing. I definitely would 10 out of 10 recommend. Um, spoiler alert, there's no telling what we're going to say. So Frank, <laughs> you've been warned. <laughs> So today our guest is Frank Tregaris, Talent Acquisition Group Leader of Lawrence Livermore National Laboratories in Livermore, California. Little thing, I actually know where that is because I'm from California. Welcome, Frank. Hi, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. We are so glad you're here. And speaking of being from California, I am not. I'm from the other L.A., um, but I heard that you grew up about 50 miles away from the lab, and now you work there. So tell us kind of about that full cycle journey from seeing it in the distance to now walking through the doors. Yeah, so um, I grew up close by uh, to the laboratory, and um, I always thought they were going to hire science and engineers, and never really dawned to me that, you know, we're like a self-contained city. We hire for everything. So... Uh, just over five years ago, um, you know, I happened to see a recruiter opening um, be posted and I applied and was uh, fortunate enough to land that role after working in the private sector for quite some time. Um, so it's it's been really great. I always had thought, you know, always had wanted to have an opportunity to work at the lab and it just was fortunate enough to land the, the role and it's kind of grown from there. So anyone who's heard me present um, at any of the hacker conferences that I've um, at, I always talk about the research labs because I am just a very big fan of the research labs. I think they're a little known secret. Not many people understand them. So each lab is responsible for something different, and that can be confusing to the clear job seeker community. So what is the mission and a little bit about the history of Lawrence Livermore Labs? Sure. So um, primarily our mission is to enable U.S. security and global stability and resilience by empowering multidisciplinary teams to pursue bold and innovative science and technology. It's a lot. Um, so at our core, um, we primarily under the Department of Energy have a sub umbrella called the National Nuclear Security Administration, and we are responsible for the component of the stockpiled stewardship program. So when the United States intentionally moved away from detonation testing, we had to find an another way to ensure our stockpile um, could function as needed if, if called upon. So that's our primary mix mission is we manage a component of the stockpile um, for the country. Outside of that, we do a lot of different things, um, as I mentioned, that pertain to national security. Uh, we've done things in cancer research, we do things in, um, in bio, uh, uh, energy is a big, uh, area for us right now as a cybersecurity. So we are a very multidiscipline uh, laboratory and we pivot to a lot of national crises. And for example, leveraging some of our um, supercomputing code that we have um, to support the COVID response. So we had leveraged some code that had been around for some while and it was able to support that. So it just shows that we have the ability to pivot to a lot of different uh, national security crises. I just love the word pivot. I don't know. I just can't stop with the pivot every time I hear it. So thank you for bringing that into what has been an otherwise mundane Monday for me. So thank you for that. Um, and kind of going back to where we started this conversation, you said something that piqued my interest about the lab really being a self-contained city. That's a great image and kind of a great way to think of really what you're able to do there. So when you think of your little micro city there, what are the type of skill sets that you're you're currently hiring for it really runs the full board um you know we obviously science uh scientists and engineers make up the core of who we are as a laboratory we hire a lot of uh engineers a lot of scientists and what you know physicists biologists chemists radio chemists very wide variety but you know we do have a heavy operational piece that supports and keeps the lab functional um, we are always looking for skate those in the skilled trades um, always looking for electricians and painters, um, civil engineers. Um, we have an on-site security force. You know, we have, you know, we're looking for plumbers. I mean, really, it, it runs the gamut of talent of what we're looking for to, to join the laboratory. 
Love it. You know what question I'm going to ask next, because you know the people want to know where <laughs> these are located. So are any of these located outside of the Livermore area? Um, very, very few. Most of our positions are all on site um, on Livermore. Uh, we do have uh, some hybrid ability for some of our roles. So it really depends on what you're doing um, in support of our mission. Uh, there are some positions that do require a full on-site presence. There's some that, you know, maybe you're on site two to three days a week. Um, again, it depends on the project um, and, and how you're supporting that particular project. So one thing that I know a lot of people don't quite understand is that the the laboratories are under the Department of Energy, so they have different clearance sort of levels. So you have Department of Energy security clearances, energy, um, excuse me, Department of Energy L and Q clearances. Can you sort of explain the reciprocity with DOD secret and top secret, and are there any issues with that reciprocity? More times than not, we are able to leverage reciprocity. Um, we generally look at when was the last time someone had their reinvestigation. If it's usually been within a five-year period, um, and even if um, you perhaps say, example, you separate from service, um, even if your investigation was within the last five years, um, we'll look at that. Uh, our security organization will and we'll make a determination if we can still leverage reciprocity, but it is something we leverage quite heavily because there are more secrets and TS and TSSCIs out in the community, clear community, rather than L's and Q's. So it definitely is something we leverage heavily. That's that's great to hear because I know that it's very confusing to a lot of people. I actually had several colleagues who worked in the IC community and they worked for other labs and mm -hmm. they were able to maintain their higher level clearances at the labs and then go back into the IC world. So do you see that? Can people still, you know, sort of if they decide to continue their career in other parts of the community that they can go back to the top secret or secret? Yeah, we've seen it, and we definitely are heavily engaged with the IC. So, um, with some of the work that we do, uh, so it, it's not uncommon. Um, we see that obviously a part of our hiring process is we do have to make sure there's no conflict of interest, you know, because mm -hmm. sometimes there's overlapping with sponsors. Um, so, but we we have an excellent ethics uh, group here at the laboratory that really looks at that um, beforehand, so we don't go too far down the hiring path to ensure that, you know, that individual would be able to join us uh, ultimately if selected. Now, even though most of our um, audience, we are assuming, are all cleared professionals, I understand that you also have the ability to go through the clearance process for many of your new employees. Is that true? That is true. Absolutely. So I would say all our position, most of our positions, yes, they will get cleared to a, um, to a queue. Some we do ask for an active clearance when they come into the door. Um, and in the, our application process, it's very clear as well as on our career site of what designates roles that need an active clearance or that you'll get cleared once you uh, begin employment. Um, but there absolutely is opportunity for, opportunities for individuals that are looking to join us that don't have an active clearance at this time. So since you address the remote issue, I'm going to run a little bit ahead and sort of talk about something else, culture, because, mm -hmm. you know, I know that when uh, I was thinking about the Lawrence Livermore Labs, because I was a young little nerd when I was growing up in California, I wasn't quite sure about the culture. So can you tell us a little bit about who is successful? I mean, really, individuals that are successful are ones that are collaborative. They want to be a part of team science. Um, the way that we go about our research and since our founding in 1952 is the lab uh, believes in having multidisciplinary individuals tackle a problem. So we really need individuals that want to be collaborative. And that's in all areas of our work. We have to be collaborative, even in, in the work that I do in talent acquisition. Um, there has to be that sense of being collaborative. Uh, and that's a big part of who we are. Um, you know, and, and buying into, you know, our values is very important. Um, ideas, impact, integrity, inclusiveness, and zeal um, are all a big part of who we are of individuals that buy into those values that want to be a part of what we are in our national mission and supporting the country. 
I just have to tell you, we have used some phenomenal words today. We've used pivot, zeal, collaboration, and reciprocity. <laughs> I cannot, I mean, I am getting pretty excited. I would also be a nerd, but maybe just a word nerd. So we'll, we'll take it either way, right? Um, but speaking of some opportunities to learn words and use a lot of words, I heard that you offer internships. Um, yeah. Though many don't require a security clearance, Tell us a little bit more about the program, how folks can get involved. Um, just sh spill a little tea about those internships. Sure. So um, we hire interns year round. Um, the vast majority of our students do come in in the summer, but we also do bring in summer uh, students through the fall and in the spring. We have um, programs where students can come directly and paid by the laboratory. Um, and then we have others where they can get funding from, say, through the DOE. So one of the programs I operate um, here I'm on, that's funded by the DOE is called the Science Undergraduate Laboratory Internship, and that runs year round. Um, and what's great about that is students can select their top three laboratories across a DOE complex to select who they would want to do an internship with. But we have a lot of what we call micro programs that are owned by us and run by us. Um, uh, we have a variety in the materials space. So we have a, what we call the Materials uh, Chemistry Institute. We have the Computational Chemistry and Materials Science. We have the Seaborg Institute, which deals with nuclear forensics, nuclear sciences. Um, we have those that focus in different areas of engineering, uh, some that focus in supporting our weapons program. Um, within our what we call computational space, we have specialized programs in data science, cybersecurity, DevOps, and in HPC uh, engineering, uh, because we actually have a variety of supercomputers here at the laboratory. Supercomputing's been a part of us since our inception, and uh, we're actually really excited because we're going to have. Um, the first exascale supercomputer come online within the complex called El Capitan uh, later this year. So well, there's a lot there's a lot going on and a lot of the internships, you know, it's really based on we want them to work, they get an opportunity to work on tangible projects that can have impact, you know, on, on what we're doing. So and um, a lot of our interns do come back quite a bit. They get exposed to um, we have different talks for different areas that occur. We do a lot of career advice, so with resume workshops, interview workshops, but to try and give them as much exposure to different things, sometimes sparking that interest to say, hey, I never really thought about doing that or pursuing graduate school or getting my PhD. And we try to afford as much opportunity for the students because that is the pipeline. That is our future, our future scientists and engineers that are gonna help continue to drive the mission, whether it's at our laboratory or any of the other laboratories across DOE. That's great. I, you know, El Capitan. Oof. So another favorite topic of ours here on the show is supporting our transitioning military. And I understand mm -hmm. that you have an employee resource group that supports transitioning military and that you also have some skill bridge opportunities. Can you share Absolutely. a little bit more with our audience about those opportunities? Yeah. So um, our employee resources group is called uh, Veterans in Energy and energy technology and science so um and the program is administered um and then our our actual veterans and transitioning military program is administered by one of my colleagues sean stevenson who is a graduate of annapolis um so he's very passionate about that program and the different mechanisms uh, so skill bridge is absolutely something we leverage quite a bit there's always a lot of opportunities with a variety of the transitioning programs that exist through the different service branches um and then even you know we engage even with the rotc students and also there's a program through the nsa that partners with the military academies as well for the students that are attending the different service academies that would like to potentially intern at the laboratory. So we have a variety of different things with our military, uh, with the, the military programs. We go out to bases. Sean was just recently at Camp Pendleton um, and he was up in Seattle. Uh, so he does get around. We usually go to the service academy um, career conference, at least the one in San Diego every year. So we do have a presence there. So very much engaged um, with supporting those that are transitioning from service. So I'm going to cut my co-host off because I know she has a really great question. I know I'm such a meanie today. What is your number one transition tip that you would share with our audience if they were transitioning into one of the labs? What would you tell them? Um, Sorry, Rachel. The big thing is uh, 
is don't be afraid to reach out to recruiters to work on you to to work on your resume um, and talk about how transferable skills align to what you're applying to um, leadership components managing budgets things of that nature how you can twist and talk about those capabilities and how they can translate to roles um, at, at the laboratory you know and it just depends you know like for example those that are um, navy nukes they're really we really seek after those for in our environment safety and health organization um, we look for individuals that you know you know, those junior officers that may have transitioned out can can really translate well into some of our project engineers to support our national ignition facility as what we call a shot director because NIF is a, a, a 24 7 facility at the laboratory so uh, for those who don't know the national ignition facility that's that's where we achieved fusion back in uh, December which is a big accomplishment for us so there is there really is a lot of opportunity but it's it what I've seen is Talk to recruiters, work on your resume so you can really get those, you know, the ability to transfer, you know, and convey what you've done and what you bring to the table. Sorry about that, Rachel. You know, I always have to sneak in a little question to support our military. Man. But at least it was a good question. So we'll, I'll let it slide this time, but next time, see you. <laughs> So, Frank, I know that we talked a lot about the positions being located there, um, but wanted to kind of ask you a little bit of a strange question here. So I'm going to take you down to the land down under with this thing called the boomerangs. So maybe you've heard about the boomerang employee, those that leave, but then they were like, maybe we're going to come back and get rehired for a second stint. So mm -hmm. there at the lab, do you see any of these boomerang employees? And what kind of recommendations do you have for these friends? Yeah, it does absolutely happen. Um, and, you know, everyone's career path takes them different ways. You know, we've seen that a lot of individuals now, you don't want, they, it's not uncommon across industry, individuals will stay at a company maybe for about five years and they want to start exploring other opportunities. And then, you know, regardless, sometimes people find that maybe it's not a fit, maybe it's not the work culture they want or it's getting the work balance they would like. And we definitely have individuals who have come back to the laboratory. Um, what I tell anyone, whether it's for us or, or any employers, never burn your bridges. You should always be respectful, especially in the R&D community. You really need to make sure that um, you know you you don't burn those bridges because it's so small. Um, be respectful and and have conversations. And you know, it's, there's an understanding that sometimes you want to move on, and but do it in a respectful manner. That they say perhaps. You know, hey, you know, I do want to come back. You know, the, it was the mission that really I, I missed supporting the mission, and we definitely do that. I mean, that's it's pretty consistent. You know, we've got we've got a couple different hiring packages I know we're working on right now for one of our areas of employees that um, want to come back. Even individuals that declined our first offer now they're coming back and say, hey, you know what? I really do want to work at the lab. So um, it definitely does happen. I always say just. Keep that open communication. Don't burn bridges because you just never know where your roads are going to lead you next. Really great advice because I always tell people when I'm talking at tap classes or anything like that, you know, the the community, the cleared community actually is a lot smaller than you think. Recruiters mm -hmm. will remember you. They will, you know, remember you not being respectful or courteous during an interview process and may go work for someone else and you have a position you really want. And lo and behold, that recruiter that you burned is the one you need to talk to. So I understand the labs has a very high acceptance rate and a very low attrition rate. What do you attribute that to? Yeah, um, I think a lot of it deal is, you know, individuals are attracted to the work that we do. Because um, like I said, it's a really wide breadth of work. And... Uh, research on a lot of different areas and our portfolio has really expanded a lot over the last uh, five plus years we've grown year over year um, I I anticipate we'll probably get over a thousand employees by the end of the fiscal uh, 9,000 employees at the end of the fiscal year um, so I, I think it's stability I think it's the mission um, I think it's the opportunity to work with cutting in tech 
cutting edge technology like the supercomputers because this day and age almost everyone who does any sort of r d at some point they're doing some sort of code they're doing some sort of simulations so having some of those resources at your fingertips really is uh, an, an excitement for a lot of individuals um and then you know attrition i i you know I, we're you know we we have our own we have attrition but it's below market you know um and i think a lot of it again is stability the work that we do, they really do enjoy the projects that they're, that they're working on. And someone can have a a a, a multi-dimensional uh, career at the laboratory. You may come in and start doing one thing, then after a couple of years, there could be another project and it could be something completely different where you're still leveraging maybe a component of your skills or you've learned things and drawn knowledge through your time at the lab that you can pivot and leverage it in another area. So uh, you can, it just, that's what's great. So if you really want to stay with us long term, you really can have a, a lot of different, your path can take you a lot of different areas. Love it. So I know in addition to all of the great advice you can give, we might also have some friends and listeners that might want to sign up to play Words with Friends with you. So how in the heck can they get a hold of you, Frank? Yeah, uh, I'm on LinkedIn, uh, Frank Trigueros. I'm the only one at the lab at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. Um, and uh, everyone can always connect with me there and um, they can shoot me a message and I'm happy to answer any follow-up questions that they have about the lab or, or point them towards colleagues on, my, uh, on our great talent acquisition uh, team here at the laboratory that can assist them in, in, in with any questions that they have about particular roles. Well, I have so learned a lot today and also really just enjoyed getting to meet you and discuss all of the great career opportunities. So wanted to say thank you for spending a little time with us today. And I know Certainly. I'm sure all of our listeners have learned something incredible. Great. Thanks well, so thank much, you. Frank. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me.